Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to divide and simplify rational expressions. So um, we've talked about simplifying rational expressions, talked about multiplying, and then we need to get into dividing. And all we need to do for dividing is just remember how do we divide fractions, because that's basically all rational expressions are, is fractions with some numbers and variables and expressions and a little bit more confusing look. However, um, let's just kind of go back to a couple things we know. You know, 1 half times 1 third, you multiply straight across. 1 times 1, 2 times 3, right? However, 1 divided by 2, or 1 half divided by 1 third, if you remember, one of the ways that we kind of wrote this, and I'll just kind of show why this works in just a second, is basically what we do is reciprocate the, um, the fraction that it's in our divisor, and then we turn this to a multiplication. So basically, we rewrite this as 1 half times 3 over 1. Then we can multiply this into 3 halves. And the reason that this kind of works is if we were, instead of writing this using a division sign, if we wrote this as 1 half divided by 1 third. Well, we have a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. We only want one fraction. We only want one numerator and one denominator. So to get rid of this denominator, basically not really to get rid of it, but if we want, don't want that denominator to show up again, we could rewrite it as 1. Well, how do we rewrite 1 third as 1? All we simply need to do is multiply it by 3 over 1. However, you just can't pick a number and multiply it by a, you know, multiply it on a fraction. If you're going to multiply that number in the denominator, you have to also multiply that number in the numerator if your purpose is to create equivalent fractions, which in this case it is. We don't want to change the value of the fraction. We just want to make sure that we are simplifying it. So 1 third times 3 over 1, that multiplies to 1. So therefore, I have 3 halves over 1. Well, now I don't need to write 3 halves over 1. I can just write. 3 halves. So I kind of went through this a little extra because it's really important. I see a lot of students that get stuck. They can multiply. They can simplify. And then they get to dividing, and they just forget. And it's not about memorizing if it's you know, what to do. It's just thinking about you know, what you remember as fractions and then going to apply them to rational expressions. So the first thing we want to do is whenever we see division is automatically rewrite this as a multiplication problem. And it's just going to make our life so much easier. So. First thing I'm going to do, um, just, and also remember that multiplication, you know, when we have all these terms multiplied, every term, as long as every term is separated by multiplication, we can just write them as one big fraction. So in this case, the, excuse me, the first example I have is already factored. So I'm just going to rewrite this as a multiplication problem and then write it as one big fraction. So here I have x plus 3 times x minus 2 all over x times x plus 1. Again, the first fraction we're not changing, it's only the divisor. Um, and that's going to be times x over x plus 3. Again, remember, um, since these fractions are, actually, let's separate them here for a second, because this one isn't going to take that much time. Times x plus 3, oh, oops, sorry, I'm sorry. Times x over x plus 3. Now, you could have written them together. You can write them separately. It doesn't really matter. But now we can apply the division property here and say that, all right, whatever terms that are same in the numerator and denominator divide to 1. And then I'm just going to be left with the rest. So therefore, I'm just left with x minus 2 over x plus 1. Okay. Um, over in this example here, um, it is always important, I think, to also you know, simplify them um, and see you know, what you can you know, factor out. So again, in this first case, we're going to factor. And then in this case, we're going to factor as well as reciprocate. So here, um, and then also for the rest of these problems, I'm just going to put them as one big fraction. Rather than having them separated, they're just multiplied by multiplication. So I'm just going to put them all together as one big fraction. So multiplying this out, I, or sorry, first of all, you notice that none of these terms are separated by multiplication. So what that means is I now need to factor them so they are separated by multiplication. Here, these are already factored. That's nice. Here, these are not factored, so we got a little work. So my first example, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 27, add to give me negative 6? All right, that factored form is going to be x minus 9 times x plus 3. As far as in the denominator, what two, um, I can see that they both share a 2 and an x. So I can factor out a 2x. And therefore, I'm going to be left with an x plus 1. Um, over here, I need to reciprocate. So therefore, I'm going to have an x squared. Now, it might be helpful, rather than rewriting an x squared, to understand that that is x times x, right? And x squared is really two x's multiplied by each other. Um, so that might be helpful to rewrite it. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as x squared. But I will talk about how that's going to be helpful here. 
And then my denominator, I have x squared minus 14x plus 45. So what two numbers multiply to give me 45 and then add to give me negative uh, 14? Well, that's going to be an x plus 9 times x plus, no, sorry, x minus 9 and x minus 5. Okay, because negative 9 times negative 5 is negative 45, but then they add to negative 14. Okay, so here's why this is important. We know the x minus 9s, those divide out to those divide out to 1, right? Well, here, I can't divide anything else in the numerator and denominator, but I do have this x, and this x is only going to divide out one of those x's, right? So it doesn't divide out both the x's, it only divides out one of them. Sometimes we'll write, sometimes we'll cross out the exponent and say put it as a 1, so therefore it's just showing there's only one x left. Um, so therefore, I have an x in the numerator, so it's going to be x times x plus 3. And then my denominator is showing x plus 1 times x minus 5. Now, it's important you could multiply this out. You know, Depending on what your teacher, the assignment, or the test is asking for, they might ask you to have this and multiply it out. I accept this you know, for usage of time. Uh, just to be written in this factored form is perfectly fine with me. Um, and that's just letting you know what I do for my students. But again, I make sure everybody is aware of what it would look like if you had a test or something else and you need to have it in a different format. All right, so again, guys, this is basically the same thing. We're just going to factor, factor, and then simplify. Here, what two numbers multiply to give you 32 and then add to give you 12? So that's going to be 8 and 4. So therefore, I multiply this times x plus 8 times x plus 4. Here, I can factor out a 6. So I factor out a 6, and then I'm left with an x plus 7. Um, just remember, guys, you're not flipping your first term. You're only flipping the second term. Um, here, let's just, we don't really need to have them. We'll just make one massive um, problem. So here, I'm going to flip this. So that means I'm going, this is now going in the numerator. So I can factor out an x. And therefore, I'm going to be left with. When I factor out an x, I'm left with an x squared plus 49. Hmm. I don't think I meant to do that. I think I meant to do that as a minus. Let me double check my work. Yeah, by mistake. That's x squared minus 49. And the reason why I kind of figured that out is because I, I know I was trying to get a difference of two squares. You, there is no sum of two squares. There is only a difference of two squares. So therefore, I can rewrite this as x squared minus 49 can be rewritten as x minus 7 times x plus 7. And then over here, this is now my new denominator. I can factor out again another x. And therefore, I'll be left with an x plus 4. Okay? So you can see you can have everything separated, like over here, or you can just rewrite them as one big fraction because they're all separated by multiplication once you reciprocate the divisor. So now we're just going to simplify terms that are exactly the same. So I have these x plus 4s, I have these x plus 7s, and I have these x's. Therefore, I'm just going to be left with an x plus 8 times an x minus 7, all divided by 6. And this last example really gets a lot of students because they see one fraction, but they don't see the other fraction. It's like, you know, all right, we're dividing rational expressions. I get it. But what do we do here when we don't have a fraction? Well, the easiest thing I would say is just make it a fraction. Put it over 1, right? Any term that doesn't have a numerator and denominator, you can make the denominator equal to 1. So now we can just quickly factor this. What two numbers multiply to give me negative 5? Add to give me a positive 4. So that's going to be x minus 5 times x plus 1 divided by x plus 5. Be careful. We can't apply the division property because they're not exactly the same. Yes, the x is and the 5 is the same, but the negative and the positive are not. <coughs> so that's going to be times uh, x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now remember, that's now in my denominator, right? Because we're reciprocating everything. So what two terms multiply to give you 5, add to give you 6? Well, that's going to be x plus 5 times x plus 1. 6x5, x, x plus 5, x squared minus 4x. Yeah, OK. All right, so in this case, if you're minus, yeah, and that's plus. Yeah, so in this case, it looks like things would simplify out, but actually, nothing really simplifies. Oh, the x plus 1s divide out. So my x plus 1s uh, do divide out. and But unfortunately, my x plus 5s are both in my denominator. So. Um, 
Yeah, that's exactly how the problem is. So unfortunately, that's all we have left. So therefore, x minus 1 times 1 is just going to be x minus 5. And then x plus 5 times x plus 5, you could just write it as x plus 5 times x plus 5. But I will at least do x plus 5 squared. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you divide and simplify rational expressions. Thanks.